Welcome to day 75 of our scripture reading and daily encouragement. Today we're going to cover Joshua chapters 18 and 19. And we're going to finish up Luke chapter 5 by covering verses 27 through 39. As we pick up in Joshua, Joshua finishes allotting the land to the Israelites. God's made the promise. The people have crossed into the promised land. And now Joshua's completing allotting the land to all the people. But I think it's interesting at the beginning of chapter 18, it says there were seven tribes that were just sort of standing around. They were waiting on something to be given to them. You know, so all but those seven tribes had come in and said, hey, here's the land I want. This is, God made a promise. I'm ready to take it. Here's the land I want. But these seven tribes were just kind of standing around. Okay, Joseph, uh, Joshua, just give us, give us the land. And I think there's something in there for us because so many times the promise is made. God delivers on his promise, but then we have to jump in there and we got to claim what's been given to us. See, these seven tribes weren't ready to claim what was given to them, what was promised and what they had achieved or earned. They were waiting on someone to do something else to hand it to them. So I want to encourage you today. If God has made a promise and he's fulfilled that promise, we have to, if we see that there, we have to claim what's been given to us. I also think it's important to realize uh, this is more in chapter 19, that Joshua, who is the leader, receives his allotment of land last. What an incredible example is a leader. You know, Jesus, we've covered where Jesus tells us, if we want to be a leader, be a servant first. Just like Jesus did for us, he was a servant leader. And that's what Joshua shows here. He was their leader, but he was a great example of being a servant leader. He put the people first. The people he was leading, he put first and gave them their allotment before himself. It's very selfless, not selfish, but selfless. And I think it's incredible to point out the example that Joshua gives us here of how to be a leader. Put the people that we're leading in front of us, their needs in front of us, their desires, get their rewards. And then God will take care of us as the leader. We have to trust we don't rush in and grab our portion first. We trust that God will reward us with our portion. And the reward becomes because we were selfless leaders. So would you be encouraged today if you're a leader? Always work hard to put the people you're leading first. Help them gain their prize first. Their reward. Their allotment of land, so to speak. Help them claim theirs first. And then trust God to provide for you, for your allotment. So we jump over into Luke chapter five. We see the story, I love this story, of where Jesus is calling Levi. Luke refers to him as his name is Levi. We know him as Matthew, the tax collector. Jesus walks up to Levi at his tax booth. So again, this is kind of like Peter, James, and John. This is what they knew. This is how they made a living. This is how they put food on the table. That same with Matthew. He was a tax collector. He was despised. He was hated. But that was his life, and that's what he did. And he was most likely better off than the other Israelites in terms of money because of what he did for the Roman government. Jesus walks up and says, follow me and be my disciple. And Levi said, you know, I'm going to pray about it, Lord. Um, give me a week. I tell you what, give me two weeks to pray. No, he, he got up. He didn't hesitate. Jesus says, follow me and be my disciple. And Levi got up, left everything, and followed Jesus. We all need to be motivated, reminded. Too many times we hesitate. Let's pray about it. Let me talk to some others. Let me seek some counsel when we know that Jesus has given us a command. Don't get me wrong. There are situations where we do have to soak it in prayer and get guidance from trusted people because we're confused if God is telling us to do something or not. But let's be honest, there are times when we know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus is telling us or the Holy Spirit is telling us, do something, do this. And we hesitate because we're scared. We hesitate because it would take us to an uncomfortable place. We hesitate because we don't think we're good enough to do it. You know, Levi or Matthew, he could have done all that, but he didn't. He simply followed and obeyed Jesus. He did what Jesus said. And some of us need to do that. 
We need to quit delaying and do what Jesus tells us to do as soon as Jesus tells us to do it. Then Levi throws a banquet. Jesus is the, the honored guest of the banquet. It says many tax collectors came. Many tax collectors were there, so it would have been Levi's crowd. And the Pharisees show up. They're looking for Jesus. They're looking for something that he does wrong. They're, they're just lying in wait and looking for him to make mistakes. And they start to criticize. Why would you associate with these scummy people? We've seen this question be asked before in another gospel. And Jesus answers them in verse 31. And he says, healthy people do not need a doctor. Sick people do. I have come to call not on those who, are, who think they're righteous, but those who know they are sinners and need to repent. This is a bit of a slap in the face. Jesus is saying, I didn't come for you. You Pharisees, you think you're righteous, but you're dirty. I came for these people who know they're sinners and they know they need to change, and I'm going to give them another option. And I think about the modern-day church, and there's so many people in the modern-day American church, and they sit around in judgment. Why would you go and witness to those people? They're dirty, the homeless, the poor, those in jail. Why would you go associate with those people and they sit on their high and mighty thrones like they've achieved something that these people don't deserve? <laughs> don't get me wrong. I've said this before. We don't want to hang out with those sin or sinners, sinful people so much that we take on their ways. But Jesus is telling us we have to go seek them out. We have to seek out the hurting, the dirty, the unrighteous. We have to seek them out and offer them the living, cleansing water of Jesus. See, I've been where Matthew was. I had that career. I had that job. I was making that money. And one day, the Holy Spirit said to me, leave it. And I knew I had to leave it because I knew the Holy Spirit was telling me. And it has led to the most fulfilling yes very difficult but some of the most fulfilling years of my life sometimes we got to get out of our comfort zone we got to leave what we're comfortable with to follow Jesus and then we got to go to some uncomfortable places and love on some people we may not normally hang out with then the disciples asked Jesus about fasting and he says, you can fast later when I am gone. See, John had given them the example of how to pray and fast. And they're asking Jesus, should we be fasting with you? And Jesus says, you can fast later when I'm gone. And he gives them an illustration. And basically, with, he gives an illustration of an old patch or, or a new patch patching an old piece of clothing or new wine being put into an old wine skin and it bursts. But really what he's saying is, I've come to do something new. I've come to do something new. You can't fit me into the old. I'm coming to change things, but not all are going to want it. And he says the old wine is just fine. Some people will say the old wine is just fine. So we have to realize some of us will be like Levi, Matthew. We will get up. We will leave the comfort. And we will follow him. And we will go love on the hurting and go to those uncomfortable places but not everyone wants Jesus. That's a hard reality we have to face. Some people think they're already righteous and they don't need him. They're good. They're living a good life. They're moral. And they think they don't need him. They kind of fall into that righteous category. Some people think that that sinful life is too much fun and they don't want to give it up. And some people think they don't deserve it. Our job is is to get out of our comfort zone, go love on those hurting people, tell them about Jesus. Some will accept him, some will reject him. Some will say, I want the new wine. The new wine is Jesus, his, the repentance, the grace, the forgiveness, restoration, redemption. And then some people are gonna say, you know what? Just like Jesus said here, the old wine is just fine, they say. So we have to ask for the Holy Spirit to give us guidance on which ones do we keep pouring into and which ones do we talk to about Jesus and leave. I hope you're encouraged today and I hope you have a great day.